Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I haven't put out a video like this in a long time, but if you've been following content for a while, you know that I make a lot of my own tackle. I make jigs, I can make swim jigs, drop shot weights, um, underspins, darter heads, uh, stuff like that. I wanna share how I make swim jigs using a do-up mold, and I'm gonna pair it up with this six Sense silicone skirt that I got specifically for the Delta. Um, I really like this black and red color. Let me show you how to make these baits. So one of the first things we gotta do is we gotta have lead to pour the lead, we gotta have the mold to make the mold, and I already have all that stuff obviously because I make my own lures, and what I gotta do first is turn on my lead pot, which is right behind me, and get that lead nice and hot so it pours really well. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get that thing fired up, I'm gonna change my clothes so that way I don't get any of this lead splatter or anything like that on my clothes. So let me go change, let me get this thing fired up, and then let me show you how to do this. So while this lead gets nice and hot in the pot, um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time in order for that to get nice and hot, but while it's heating up, I'm gonna show you what equipment I'm gonna be working with today. Um, the do-it molds that I have, the hooks that are gonna be going in this. And um, one disclaimer about the hooks is I do have a sponsorship with Owner. I've already had these hooks here at my house, so I'm gonna be using them right now. But when I do end up using what I have here already, I will be going to Owner. Um, these Owner hooks that I got for some jigs, some football head jigs are awesome. Uh, let me just show you real quick one that I have poured up already. Um, these things are pretty rad. Um, these hooks are nasty. They're super sharp, great on a football head jig. I can't wait to get these all painted up and ready to go, but that hook's super sharp. I can't wait till I have some swim jigs with the owner hooks on them as well, but I got the mustads right now, so let me show you what I'll be working with today. So all this stuff is available for you to purchase. There's no secret stuff going on here. There's nothing weird going on. It's just literally what I have in my house right now. Um, I had those jig skirts that I already showed you. I bought them specifically for the California Delta. I'm gonna be making up some of those swim jigs right now. I'm gonna be making up some 3 8 and some half ounce swim jigs. Uh, so here's the equipment that I'm gonna be using. Like I said, these are gonna be Mustad 4 aught hooks. I've got two different do it swim jig poison head molds. The reason I need two molds is because I'm making 3 8 ounce and I'll be making a half ounce as well, and I need two different molds for that. And then right here, we got the Lee lead pot with the lead getting nice and hot. The combination of all that stuff is what's gonna make those swim jigs today. One other thing that you gotta use with these molds are the weed guard pins. What that does is it leaves an opening in the lead head that you can put a weed guard in there. All that stuff is available for you to purchase. You can go online to the Duo Molds website, whatever, and purchase that stuff if you want. But that's the equipment we're gonna be using today. So once that lead's nice and hot, we'll get ready to go. So why this lead's getting all hot and ready to go, something I wanna talk to you guys about is why I have all this stuff. You know, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different molds to make different stuff. Four of them are drop shot, two of them are these swim jig molds. I got two different football head ones. Um, I have all this stuff because for a while there I was really trying to um, sell this stuff on Instagram and Facebook and all that to help offset these tournament costs because as most of you know that watch my content or you know pay attention to my in Instagram, stuff like that, I wanna fish professionally. In order to do that, I gotta fish these tournaments. I've gotta learn, I've gotta get better at fishing. And in order for me to get better at the tournament side of fishing, which is really what's gonna allow me to fish professionally and fish full time, quit the job and do all that, is paying these entry fees and paying to go out and compete against the best guys that I can compete against right now. And that's where some of this tackle stuff came into play. I've sold swim jigs, football jigs, drop shot weights, all kinds of different stuff over Instagram in local tackle shops and stuff like that. So that's why I have all this stuff. I really enjoy doing it, it's pretty fun. There is a learning curve to it. You do have some trial and error. You do mess up, mess up some of this stuff, but the more you do it, the better you get. And you can save some money. It, it's not super cheap to get started. So it's one of those things that you need to evaluate whether it's worth it for you over time. I knew that I wanted to make this stuff and sell it. So there was gonna be some you know, monetary benefit to me buying all this stuff. 
but you're not gonna get rich doing it unless you decided to go into it full time, figure out how to scale your cost to buy the hooks, the molds and everything way, 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 way down. Then you can make some money doing it. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to tell you how to do that. I've made a little bit of money, but I guarantee you the money I have made is less than minimum wage when you factor in your time it takes to do all this stuff. But if it's something that you're gonna do yourself anyway and you wanna make a little bit extra money, feel free to do that. I think it's a fun way to make a little bit of money. You're still at home, you're still at the house, and it's just something that you know I knew that I could do, and I figured it was a good way for me to make a little bit extra cash to help offset some of my fishing costs. Some other things that you really, really, really need to take into consideration when you're working with lead is to not let this get on your skin as much as possible. You don't want to breathe in the fumes. So there are some safety precautions that you need to take into consideration. I am the furthest thing from an expert on that as possible. So I am not the best person to give you all the advice on what precautions you need to take in order to keep yourself as safe as possible when working with this lead. So I highly recommend you go out and do some research on what you need to do, whether you need to get a mask or do this out in the open. I'm out in the garage right now. I have the garage completely open. We have a little bit of wind blowing in the garage right now still probably not as safe as possible. So I'm not putting all those conditions out there as a recommendation. I recommend that you go out, do your own research, figure out how to do this as safe as possible because there are some health concerns that you need to take into consider when working with lead. So one little tip that you can do while you're waiting for this lead to heat up is get your molds and your hooks nice and hot because sometimes when that stuff's cold, it cools the lead down too quickly and you don't get good pours. So what I'm gonna do right now is get my hooks and my weed guard pins set in the mold and I'm gonna set it up on top of the lead pot itself so that way it starts to warm up as this lead starts to melt and get nice and hot. And then I'm not gonna have to wait as long until I start getting good pours because a lot of time when everything is cold, like I said, you won't get good pours. It's not gonna you know, look like it's supposed to. You're gonna have like areas on the hook that didn't have lead where the lead's supposed to go. So I'm gonna show you how to get these things set up in the molds themselves, set them up on top of the lead pot so that way they start to get nice and hot. And once that lead's ready to go, these molds and these hooks are gonna be ready to go and we're gonna be able to get some good pours right away. So what we got right here is our hooks, our weed guard pins, and then we got our two molds right here. Um, I preset the hook and the weed guard pin in their position just because it was difficult to do while I was holding the camera. So those ones are ready to go. All we gotta do is close up these molds, just like so, just like so. And now we're gonna just set them up on top of the pot, just like that. And we just let them sit there. They all get nice and hot. And once that lead's ready to go, these molds will be ready to go, the hooks will be hot, the weed guard pins will be hot, and we should have good pours from the first one on. So it looks like the lead's nice and hot, so I'm gonna take these molds down, and we're gonna go pour here in a second. So as you can see, you can kind of shake it around, you can see that that lead's nice and liquid, almost like, you know, as fluid as water. I'm gonna pour some of it out for you, so it just comes out just like that. Okay, so our lead's ready to go. We got our hooks and our weed guard pins inside of our molds. I'm gonna put the mold right underneath here. I'm gonna lift up on the let lever and let that lead out. When it comes to the top, you gotta stop. I'm gonna grab my other mold for the other size that I'm gonna be making as well. Do the same thing over again. And just like that, we should have two nice looking swim jigs inside of these molds. Let's take a look. So as you can see right here, we got a couple good pours. This one's the 3 8 ounce one, it looks pretty good. And here's our half ounce one, that one looks pretty good as well. And that's how you start this process, the lead's poured. You can start to see the swim jig tart start to sh take shape. So, so I'm gonna pour up a few more of these because I'm gonna make a total of five. I got five of those skirts that I showed you guys in the beginning of this video. So I'm gonna pour up a few more of these things. That way I have my five ready to go. I'll show you how I paint them up, put them in to bake to get that paint nice and hard and more durable. And then we'll get the weed guard in there as well. And then we'll put that skirt on there. So now as you can see, I got all the lead out of those hook eyes. 
So now the line's gonna feed in there nice and good. We'll get these things painted up black. I'll show you how to do that right now. So this next part might be a little bit more difficult to show you because it's gonna get loud with the heat gun because I'm gonna heat up these swim jigs in order to apply that powder paint to it. And um, the heat gun's a little bit loud and um, so it might be a little bit more difficult but bear with me on this part so that way I can show you how to get these things painted up. Okay, so what we have right here is what's called a fluid bed. And what this does is it pumps air into this cup where the black powder paint is, so you get air coming through it and it gives you a nice smooth consistency, and that's gonna really help paint those baits better. It's connected to a fish tank aerator that pumps air through those hoses and into that cup to give you that effect. The next thing I'm gonna show you is this heat gun. And that's what I'm gonna use to heat up these jigs. That the heat comes out of the top where that silver part is, it heats them up nice, and then I just dip them into the powder paint. What I like to do is heat them up for about a count of between 15 to 20 count because that gives it an, enough heat that it doesn't burn the paint when you get it on there, but it's enough heat that it gives it a nice, good coating of paint on there. Sometimes you have to look at it and you might have to do that a couple different times, but once you heat it up nice and hot that first time, you don't wanna heat it up quite as much again because you'll end up burning that paint. So you just need to get a little bit of paint on there and then get it a little bit of heat and then you're good to go. So I got these swim jigs all painted black. You might see they look a little bit dull in some areas, a little bit powdery, but that's all gonna get fixed as soon as they go into the oven to bake to get that uh, powder paint nice and hard and more durable. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at each individual swim jig in order to make sure that the paint didn't close up the hook eye. And what I'll do is if they, if they did get closed up is I use this little tool right here and all I do is just squeeze it down on the hook eye and it basically busts loose that powder paint before, before I put it into bake so that way those hook eyes are nice and open, easy to get the line through. So as you can see right here, this one looks pretty good, but I'm just gonna use it as an example. So what you do is you just put the hook eye into the hole on this little clip thing, you put it in there, squeeze down on there, it's got it inside, and it's busting all that paint loose. Just like that, just clean it up with your fingers. So what I like to do is I take a, a hook that I have laying around, and I just clean it out just a little bit more trying to be careful that I don't knock any paint off the actual bait itself. Then I got a nice little opening, and if there's any little flakes or anything like that sticking out, that'll, that'll melt down once it's in the bake. And then what I do is I do this to every single one. I make sure that there's no issues getting that, that line through your hook eye, because there's nothing worse than trying to use a bait and you can't get the line through there, especially out on the water. Blow that everything loose. Get it ready for the next one. This one right here is good to go, so I don't think I need to mess with it. This one looks pretty good as well. And if you see this part right here, how there's a little bit of paint sticking up off the edge of it, that's okay, that's something that'll melt down, or you can just remove it just like that. This one almost looks like it's completely done. It's all nice and bright and shiny, but I'm gonna open up that hook eye just a little bit more. So now as you can see, I opened it up just a little bit more. That way you're not gonna have any issues with the line going through there. And as you can see, this has the, the weed guard pins out now. I like to take it out right after I put the powder paint on there. That's the easiest time to get it out. Cause if you wait too long, sometimes it'll chip right around the edges of where that opening is. So the next thing we do is we put those swim jigs into bake and it gets, they bake in just a toaster oven, that's what I use, and it just cures that paint. It gets them all nice, bright, and shiny, cures that paint so they're much more durable. As you can see, those swim jigs are inside the toaster oven. You don't want them touching, you want them to be able to swing free like that because there is, they will move a little bit inside the toaster oven while they're getting heated up, and you just don't want them to touch because if they touch, they'll end up curing themselves together and then you'll have to redo them, throw them out, something like that. So the swim jigs are inside the toaster oven right now. They're getting baked. 
probably takes 20 minutes to a half an hour depending on how far I turn the dial. But they're gonna bake around 350 degrees for that, you know, 20, 25 minutes or so. Once they're done, they cool down. That paint job is gonna be much more durable. We can start putting on uh, the skirts or the weed guards first. So these are the five weed guards I'm gonna be using for the five swim jigs. These are Boss weed guards. I really like the Boss the best because they have this little coating on the end of the weed guard that just really helps put, makes it a lot easier to put these weed guards. All right, so my swim jigs are done baking in the oven. I'm gonna bring them back out over to the workbench here and we'll start our next step, which is gonna be putting the weed guards in there. I like to use the Agrilla epoxy in the clear color. Um, I just feel like it's easy to work with, it dries really quick, and um, I've just had good success with it. So I recommend the Gorilla Epoxy. And then here's my, you know, I just use a toothpick to stir everything. And then here's our weed guards. One thing you wanna do with all the jigs is make sure that the openings are gonna fit the weed guard properly. So what I like to do is I set them up and I take one of these weed guards and I just put them in each of the holes just to make sure that this weed guard's gonna go in there nice. See this one might need to just be drilled out just a little bit, just so it goes in there a little bit easier. So what I do is if they don't go in smooth, like this one goes in nice and smooth, so that one's good to go, I just separate them. So that way I know which ones I need to just drill out a little bit more or the ones that are just good to go. And it just means that a little bit of the paint got in there and um, just was blocking that weed guard spot a little bit. So I got two that I just need to drill out just real quick and then we'll start gluing these things in or epoxying these in. So the diameter of these weed guards are 1 8 inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill out a 1 8 hole in these two swim jigs. It's already pretty close, so it doesn't take much to drill it out, but here it goes. Here's number one. And number two. It's really that simple, that quick, and then I'm just gonna blow out the uh, anything that's in there. And then now these ones are ready to go to have the weed guards epoxied inside. And then what I like to do is I just take a paper plate and I pour just uh, squeeze a little bit of the epoxy out onto the plate, trying to get even amounts of the epoxy, the hardener, and the other side. Clean that off so that way it doesn't harden up on my when I, while it's stored. Take my toothpick right here, just mix it up so that way the hardener and the epoxy just kind of mix together good because that's what's gonna make it get hard. I'm gonna have a lot left over, but that's just kind of the, the way it goes. So it's nice and mixed up right there. And then all you gotta do is just take your swim jig right here, just dip the end of the weed guard in there, and then just slide it on in, just like so. And there it is, pretty simple. We'll do that for these other four. Same process over again, just dip the end in. Doesn't take a lot, it just popped in there. We got three more to go. But yeah, it's super simple. A little goes a long way. You don't have to put a bunch on there. You, you don't really want a lot of overflow. Sometimes it happens, but it dries clear, so you're good to go. So even if you have a little bit of overflow onto the head of this swim jig, it's not the end of the world. It'll, it'll work itself out and it'll be clear, so it won't be too big of a problem. So like I showed you guys in the beginning of this video, we're gonna be using the Six Sense silicone skirts. The color I am using right here is Delta Craw. I said in the beginning of this video, I have a tournament up at the California Delta, so I got these ones specifically for that. So let's open up this package and we'll slide these skirts on. So I've got everything set up, we're ready to go. We're ready to um, thread these swim jigs onto the jig skirts. But one thing I want you to notice is that these jig skirts are not even. So basically what I'm saying is there's one side of the skirt is longer than the other. And that's important because you want all this stuff to lay correctly. So you wanna thread your hook into the short side. That's really important so that way when it falls down like this, like when it, when you're gonna be fishing it and all that, it's gonna be you know evenly length or one side just gonna be a little bit longer. But what you don't want is to thread 
the hook into the long side and then the next thing you know you're just gonna have like this little flare and it's not gonna look like what you're going for so let's thread this thing on there so depending on what colors you want to be more vibrant like obviously this is much more black than it is red but it has that red that shines that shows through the back so I want to keep that towards the back so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my swim jig and I'm gonna find basically the middle of this skirt and I'm gonna poke the hook through the weed guard and find the middle of this skirt and I'm gonna thread my hook down through and then just bring the jig the skirt up the shank of the hook kind of feather things out so it goes on there smooth and it's gonna lay correctly and then just thread it up the shank of the hook just like so and it's got one more to go and then just position it so it's a little bit off center, that red's a little off center. So all I'm gonna do is just squeeze it and move the red to the back where I want it. Just kind of make sure everything else is all, you know, nice and smooth there. Move it a little bit more so it's nice in the back. And then there you go, my swim jig is almost done. I just have the eyes left, but otherwise this thing's looking, looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna thread these skirts on the final four swim jigs I have here. I have a couple half ounce and I have three that are uh, three eighth ounce. So I'm just gonna thread these last ones on there and then we can move on to the final step, which is getting our bluer eyes put on these swim jigs. So I got these swim jigs just Almost all the way done. I got all the skirts on there looking pretty good. Just the final stage here is gonna be putting on those lure eyes. So Sixth Sense also makes lure eyes and has them available for sale. These ones in particular are not Sixth Sense, but I do recommend the Sixth Sense one. Ones I've used those in the past and I like them, but I just got these. I can't remember where I got these ones, but um, I'm gonna go with red eyes to go with the red in the skirts. I think that's gonna look pretty good. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit more epoxy and we'll put these eyes on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up a little bit more epoxy and a little goes a long way, especially when you're doing the eyes. So we're just gonna do a little tiny little bit. We only got five to make. Um, so same process, we're gonna get that epoxy onto the plate. We're gonna take the paper clip or the, the toothpick, mix it all up. And this time I got two uh, toothpicks because this one I'm going to use to mix and then I'm going to use another one to make a little dab on the um, spot of the swim jig where I'm going to put that eye. So that's good to go. It's mixed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this toothpick right here and I'm going to dab it in there and I'm going to put just a little bit where the eye is going to go. Do the same thing for the other side. And like I said, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit just to get that that eye to stick on there. And then I, the next thing I do is I take tweezers just like this and I just take that eye off. And sometimes it sticks to the edge, just kind of kind of wing it a little bit on this part. But what I do is I have that epoxy on there already. And I just lay that eye in there just like that. And I'm gonna move it around just so it goes into the right spot. That epoxy gets on there and it's in the right spot. I'm gonna set it down and get my other eye for the other side. It's on there. Flip it over. Set that eye in the epoxy again. Once it's on there, put it in its spot and then it's good to go, and then we're just gonna let it dry. And if you get a little epoxy on the head of this swim jig, it's not that not that big a deal. It dries clear and you won't even notice it. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna repeat that process on the rest of these swim jigs, so that way we can get the eyes all put on there. And this takes a little bit of time to get, to get good at. I don't think I'm that great at it, but I have my way of doing it. Don't know if it's the best, but it's just the way that works for me. So that's just the way I've been doing it since I started, um, there's probably some people out there that do it a different way, but like I said, it just works for me. So we'll just keep putting these eyes on there and we'll have five swim jigs ready to go after, after we're done here. So 
So these swim jigs are all ready to go. They got eyes, weed guards, skirts, painted, all that. The only thing left for them to do is just to completely dry. You don't want to fish these right away because that epoxy is not all the way dry. So you want to give it, you know, at least overnight, if not 24 hours to dry. But I think these things turned out pretty good. The red eyes look pretty good on these baits with that red in the skirt. So I hope that this makes it easy for you to go out, get some swim jig molds, pour some lead, get these things ready to go for yourself. So I think overall these things turned out pretty good. I like the red in there. I like the black. I like the red eyes in this thing. Uh, these swim jigs turned out good, I think. I hope this video was informative for you. If you already have this stuff, hopefully it helped you get better at your own swim jig making. If you haven't gotten any of this stuff to do it yourself, you can get it at Do It Molds. You know, there's other websites out there as well that you can get this stuff at. Um, it, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not impossible to do. As you can see, there's some things that I could I can get better at myself, but it's something I enjoy to do. I'm a lot better now than I was when I started, and you will be too. So I hope you like this video. I hope that you can share it with other people that might like to make their own baits or are interested in learning how to do it. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you are subscribed but haven't hit the bell for notifications, make sure you do that if you're subscribing for the first time. Also hit the bell for notifications so that way you get updated when I post new content. I really want this channel to grow and I need your help to do that. Um, I can't do it all on my own. I can try to put out the best content that I can, but I need your subscriptions, I need your shares, I need your comments. So if you like this video, please like it, please comment, please share and subscribe. You can always contact with me with any questions via Instagram, email, Facebook, whatever, feel free to hit me up with any questions. Once again, I really hope you like this video and I thank you for watching.